What is a recommendation for natural treatment for HIV? Now, this is an interesting story. Uh, it was only 20 years ago, some of you may remember, that HIV was actually called gay man's disease. Uh, we had a political environment in this country, and obviously in other places around the world, that there were very conservative ideologists who were in charge at that point and would like for the public to believe it was a gay disease. Anyone who was having at least some level of common sense and read any of the medical literature from the globe realized that this was an African heterosexual disease that was rampant in Africa and now, as we know, decades later, has killed millions of people and left orphans in the millions in, in, the, in the continent of Africa. Uh, we also know it wasn't a conspiracy put here by the government to kill gay people. We know the name of the flight attendant, anyone who bothers to read, uh, that literally transported it here. His flight schedule was between Africa at part of the year and the United States, San Francisco and New York. He was a promiscuous gay man at that point. Literally, that's where the seed came from. And the promiscuous attitude of the homosexual community at that point helped to spread it. At that stage, no money was placed into it because it was commonly believed that there was only a small segment of the population that was going to be afflicted by this, where those of us who were understanding biology in a real sense, not propaganda sense, knew that this would be a rampant heterosexual disease and it had nothing to do with homosexuality. We had evangelical lunatics on American television uh, saying that God sent this down to afflict people. Now, let's come to our senses. It's a retrovirus. Uh, a retrovirus is what we believe a mutagen of a rhinovirus. They're microscopic. What makes them unique in the human body is that the immune system knows how to deal with rhinoviruses, colds, flus, etc. As a matter of fact, to the immune system, the cells that you have that protect you from the minute you're conceived, they actually go after the rhinovirus as easily as they would an elephant with a target on its side. A retrovirus is microscopic and the immune system is just becoming familiar with how to deal with this and hasn't done a very good job so far as we know. It also has the ability, because of its size, to enter into cells and become part of tissue mass, including organs in the body. It makes it camouflaged and quite difficult for the immune system to function with it. This is why it was a scary disease. One of the cousins of this is called chronic fatigue syndrome, originated under the name Epstein-Barr virus. Uh, there's, as we know from university studies worldwide, several families of this. Uh, here in North America, we realize that if you're 35 years old and younger, uh, up to 40% of the population uh, contracts at that age uh, and under that age this retrovirus. So AIDS is looked at, in my mind, the same way that any disease is, that we've got to strengthen the immune system. Now by taking the cocktail drugs, and my God, the, the AZT, which they originally unleashed to the gay man disease, which was outrageous. This was a medical drug that was used for chemo, as a chemotherapy against cancer up until the late 1950s. In the 1950s, they confirmed that it was killing people and not helping cancer. They put it on the shelf, of course, when this new disease called HIV came. They then took it off the shelf, blew the dust off, and were charging up to $15 to $2,000 a month for these poor people afflicted with the disease that, by the way, right out of the gate, they were told it was a fatal disease. Now, if we get a drug and put into the body that's going to devastate the immune system, such as a chemotherapy drug, how would you ever expect to get that immune system to get rid of this virus that it's having a difficult time to get rid of to begin with? It's an impossibility. So what you have to do is live a lifestyle that's commendable. Live a lifestyle that has every single aspect with one focus, to strengthen the T cells, the general of the immune system, and the B cells, and the H cells, the lieutenants, and the leukocytes, the army, and the eosinophils, and the basophils, and the navy, and the marines. And until we get that immune system functioning, we're going to have that disease, and by the way, cancer and all other diseases. 
There's no secret. There's no uh, sophisticated way that disease is dealt with. It all comes down quite simply to your immune system. And let's go back. It's not just diet. It's attitude, attitude, attitude first. We started 20 years ago to have people with HIV and AIDS come through the program. I was appalled with the way that the other guests at the Institute were dealing with these poor people and saying that they may contract it. But, you know, you have to understand this was what the media via the pharmaceutical industry was propelling. And I finally got so sick of it, although this was a major problem for us economically, I said, let's have specific programs just for the, these people with HIV and AIDS. And it was really a, a, a good decision I made without even knowing at the time how good it was. One thing that we had as a problem then is I and, and Anna Maria could pretty much look at anyone in the eye and uh, with most diseases say to them, hey, we've worked with uh, one or a hundred or a thousand or twenty thousand people who have had your problem and help them to heal themselves. And we've seen it in hundreds or thousands of cases with HIV and AIDS. Uh, there was so much speculation and nonsense going on, we couldn't say that. We had never worked with anyone with a disease. So we had to find somebody who could look them in the eye, because one of the first and foremost ingredients that have made Hippocrates Institute's work successful is we come from a long tradition of massive experience on the front line and conquest of diseases that other people have utterly failed with and given up on. We found a wonderful lady who was the very first person in the United States diagnosed as zero negative. Now let's explain to the listeners what that means. Uh, the way they observe, and it was the Western blot that did this, uh, AIDS, how much you have is the viral load. When they don't find you had antibodies that were active, that means that the virus is completely gone. Well, this woman, Nero Essitant, literally went to the disease control center because there were very few places in this country and, and anywhere, frankly, dealing with AIDS at that point, other than the disease control center. And they kept her there three days and finally told her that you're in total remission, that your AIDS is gone. And this was a disease, of course, uh, at one point, not soon before this, she was laying in bed dying from. And Rather than this middle age, was totally the opposite stereotypical person that had AIDS at that point. Most people that had AIDS were very thin gay men. This was a heavy set middle aged grandmother who contracted AIDS from what she found out was her bisexual boyfriend. And bottom line is, she didn't go home and, and start to knit. She went out, wrote a book, and now is doing classes to help people with AIDS. Another wonderful person at that time, Louise Hayes, went out into the AIDS community and talked to them about changing their attitude, not feeling they're afflicted, not feeling that something's wrong because they're homosexuals, and not feeling that this is a disease that's afflicting them because they have some kind of an ideology different than everyone else's. And these two wonderful ladies were, were out there and doing the work that we so readily needed at Hippocrates. Uh, Nero came in and became a major part of our HIV and AIDS program. What she did was invaluable. She locked those people in the room. Uh, time and time again, I saw that talk she gave to them, show them the paper, said, I was dying, here I am alive, be the turning point. And there's been so many people that have healed AIDS on the program. And there's no magic in this. It's hard work. It's self-respect it's honor, it's love, and it's getting rid of all the negativity in your mind about what, why, and how, and none of that really matters. Now is what matters. Now is what matters. And when you deal with now consistently, tomorrow becomes brighter. There's no question. Uh, in the next magazine that many of you will receive globally in early January, it will be coming out January 2nd and shipped to you, uh, there's an article with a young man who came to us in one of those first programs uh, two decades ago and put his AIDS in total remission. And it's a very touching article uh, because it talks about how he did it, recovered uh, like many of us, became ignorant again, went back to his old lifestyle, and thank God healed himself after he woke up the second time. So that's what we say about HIV and AIDS. Do not make it the monster. The pharmaceuticals make it. Uh, thank God that there are people courageous enough to take that responsibility and be walking, talking examples of what anyone afflicted with AIDS can be.